out from the camp the Philistine champion named Goliath. This is not the roller coaster. This is literally a person. They took the roller coaster name and made a person. And this is how intimidating he was. He was the height of six cubits, which is about eight or nine feet. His, uh, and, and then in Samuel verse 5, he says he had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with coat mail. That weight of the coat mail was 5,000 shekels. Okay? He had graves of bronze on his leg and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. He was huge. He was he, he looked like one of the superheroes today. He looked really buff and intense and intimidating. And he was an enemy of Israel, an enemy of the people of God. And what did he do? He began to stand in between Israel and said, Anybody who wants to fight me, anybody who wants to fight me, come and fight me. And he would even start mocking, mocking uh, Israel about their faith and about their God. He stood before them and shouted, Why have you not come up to draw in battle with me? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down for, 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 to me. If he is able to fight me and kill me, then will, will we be your servants? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall serve us. And today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight. He's literally saying, you guys, if you can't beat me, you'll be my servants. You'll all be my servants. You'll all be ruled under me. And if you can't bring me a guy, then forget it. You're not worth it. You're not worth it. And so, so he's mocking. He's mocking even the, the God of Israel. He's mocking the people of Israel. And he's saying, what? Do you have? What do you have against me? What can you do against me? I am much more greater than you. I'm much more greater than your God. And he defines them. And he intimidates them. And he puts fear into them. And no man of Israel wants to face this giant. No man of Israel wants to go up against him because he is so strong. He is so bold that he can even mock the people of Israel and God. Do you, do you realize what he just did? He just mocked the people of Israel and God. There are going to be points in your life that people are going to mock you. There are going to be points in your life where people are going to mock the faith that you have. There are going to be points in your life where you're going to be disrespected of your faith or disrespected of who you are or faced in intimidating situations. But are you intimidated? Are you afraid? See, all the odds, all the odds show that Goliath is intimidating. He's fearful. He's huge. He, he, he's so intimidating that nobody can match him. Nobody could face him. He's just a, a might, uh, a challenging force. How, how many people have been in challenging situations where you're afraid? Where, you, where things are overwhelming. Things are out of, uh, just above you. They're, they're, they're intimidating. They're fearful. They're, they're challenging and you're scared and you're intimidated. And you're like, there's no way I can beat this guy. There's no way I can win. It's just an unmatched competition. I'm, this is beyond my league. This is beyond my skill set. This is beyond me. And we start to allow the giants of our life to take over and the challenges of our life to take over. But the reality is we have to face. Amen. Amen. We have to face our challenges. We have to face our giants. Now, let me tell you, Goliath is nine feet tall. He's huge. He's masculine. He has a javelin the size of this, probably the size of this room. It could extend all the way down four rows. <laughs> I mean, he could put five of us on a skewer and barbecue us for, <laughs> for a day. <laughs> so I, got, I got five of you guys. I'm just going to roll you up and spin you around. I mean, it was like, there's nobody, nobody of Israel wanted to face him. But one guy. One guy, and his name was David. And David is a young guy. He's like a 17-year-old, 15-year-old guy. And his dad says, hey, 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 his dad. Who's, who's David's dad again? What's David's Jesse. dad? Jesse goes, hey, hey, David, David, your brothers, all your brothers. David was the youngest of eight brothers. David was the youngest of eight brothers. He was the youngest. David was the little brother. David was the little brother who got picked on by everybody. He was the one who got the servant job. He was the shepherd boy. 
He's only 15 years old. He's only like 15 or 17 years old. And his dad goes, hey, can you go to your brothers who are like maybe 20, 18, who are men? He said, hey, can you go to your brothers and can you bring them some bread? Can you bring them some? I can imagine my mom saying this. Can you bring onigiri? Onigiri? Can you onichani? Oni, oni, oh, what is that? Onichani, ano, ano, onichan ni pan agite kudasai. Pan, onichani, pan wa agite kudasai. He's literally saying, give, give your brothers some bread. They're, they're on the battlefield right now. David, I want you to go down and give them some bread. Can you do that for me? So David's like, yeah, okay. And he's young, right? So he can't go to the war. He can't go to the army. But he goes down there, and his eldest brother, Elab, is seeing David with the bread. And he goes, hey, here's bread. Here's everything. And he, his eldest brother gets really upset and he, he says to him, David, why are you here? This is a battlefield. We're in war right now. Goliath is right there. What are you doing here? I know why you're here. I know why you're here, David. You're here just because you want to see. You want to see this fight, don't you? You want to see this fight, don't you? He says, why have you come down with whom you have left those sheep in the wilderness? You should be shepherding. What are you doing? You left the sheep out in the middle of nowhere. What are you doing here, you little, you little rascal? All right. And, and he even goes to, as far as to, 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 to challenge his motives. He says, I know your presumption and your evil heart, for you have come down just to see the battle. You have come down just to see us fight. This is not something you want to be in. This is not something you want to be involved in. You're a little kid. Get out of here. How many know what that feels like? Being a little brother, little brother. <laughs> I have to be protected, right? What are you doing? I we're playing a real game right now. Hey, get out of here, okay? You're embarrassing me, okay? I got that a lot. Hey, get out of here! You're embarrassing me. No offense to you, but there's a whole thing about that. That his brother is really upset. He says, "I know in your heart, David. I know you can't, David. Come here. I know you didn't just come here to bring me bread. I know you came here just to watch us fight. But this is not a joke, David." This is not a joke. You have, you're, 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 you're playing silly games. But David really came down to bring bread. I mean, he's doing exactly what his dad said, okay? So David's like, well, yeah, I came down. <laughs> I appreciate you. wanted to see what his big brothers were doing. They're dressed up in armor, representing Israel. I want to go see my big brother fight in a war. So David went down to the battlefield. And, and D David's brother, his oldest brother, imagine that, like 20 years older, saying to you, hey, Get out of here, kid. This is not for you. And then, and then, and then, and then David kind of says, but I, I think I could fight him. I could fight him. I could fight him. And then, and then Saul says, he goes to Saul and he says, I, I think I could fight this guy. I, I'm an Israeli too. I, I could do this. Huh? We're all part of, you got to understand Israel. They're like a family. It's like everybody in this town. All the young kids, we'd say, okay, you can't fight, but we're all family. We're all connected. So, so he's like, you're just a kid. But he goes to Saul, King Saul. He goes to King Saul in 1733. You're not able to go against this Philistine to fight him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. David, you're just a kid. You're just a young guy. There's no way you can fight this guy. He's been a warrior. He's been raised this way. There's no way you can fight him because you're so young. Let me tell you something. These are two stops. These are people are going to stop you. People are going to stop you from doing something, and you're going to have some stops in your life. David's brother, Elab, saying, "You can't go and fight. You can't go and fight. This is crazy, David. You're just out here to have fun and look at us fight." He, he's putting a stop in his way, and Saul's going, "You're you're too young. You can't do this. There's no way you can do this kind of fight. Have you ever gotten that? People just stop you from pursuing your goals." People, people just stop you from pursuing whatever you want to do. I, I, I've gotten that a lot. I mean, people have stopped me. They're saying, you're not good enough. You're not worthy enough. There's stops in your life. People are going to put stops in your life. The sa Satan is going to, maybe the enemy is going to put stops in your life, but you've got to respond. You know, I've actually gotten this. You've been a young boy. You know, every time, I've even gotten this during my chaplaincy. I've gotten this a lot. I visit a lot of elderly people, and they look at me, and they go, what's this kid doing in here? I'm like, I'm like, they're like 90 years old, and they, they literally, one guy said, you're too young. And, and you know, I, I get that. I get that. I'm young. I'm young. But don't ever despise youth. Don't ever despise youth. 
Because I promise you, I got a heart. I got a heart to care. Don't ever despise youth. I don't even despise old age. And if anybody says you're too young, take that as an opportunity. I, I love what David says in response to his youth. He says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down and rescuing the lamb from the mouth and it turned against me and I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Okay, David is saying that, yeah, I may be young, but do you know, do you know that I killed a lion and a bear? A 600 pound bear? Okay, Goliath is only 200 pounds or maybe 100, 200 pounds. David took out a 600-pound bear, a 700-pound lion, okay? And these things are, ki- are trained to kill. And David is saying, do you not see my experience? Never think that your youth is a problem. Yeah. Never think that your youth is a problem. People are going to say, you're too young, you look too young. I get that all the time. But let me tell you, that 90-year-old guy who said he's, he's too young, he even told that to me from my face. He said to me, you're too young. You don't know what I'm going through. And what I don't know what he's going through is that he's dying. I don't know what that's like. But I didn't let that stop me from being with him. I didn't let that stop me from caring for him. I said, how are you doing? How is everything going? I still want to treat him with respect and dignity because that's part of my job. Guess what? He told the nurse, I don't want this young guy to come in. He told the nurse, I don't want, he's too young. This guy's too young. He's telling, because he doesn't want me around, right? Because I'm going to talk to him. But then, because I kept going, he said, well, you can have him come back. You can have him come back. Amen? Amen. I want to tell you something. Your experience is important right now. Your youth is important right now. When somebody older says, you're not good enough or you're not worthy, have a response back. David said, I have done this before. I am skilled. I am trained to do this. Even up here, you might say, wow, that's a young pastor. Give glory to God for that. Give glory to God. I love meeting older pastors to say, glory to God that you're able to serve God at a young age. Amen. So I want you to understand that everything in your youth, everything that you're doing in your youth is important. Have a response. David said, I could, t- I could take Goliath out. I took out a bear and a lion. Is that not good enough for you? He took out a bear and a lion. Is that not good enough for you? And so, <clears throat> so he took out this bear and a lion. So he's not afraid. And, and this uncircumcised, so David says, I took out a bear and a lion. I killed a bear and a lion. Un- this uncircumcised Philistine shall not shall be like one of them. And he has defiled the armies of God. He has mocked God. He has judged my God. And you know what? I killed a bear and a lion. This guy will just be like them. I will kill him too. I will kill him too. Put that guy on my order. I'm going to get a cheeseburger and french fries and a Goliath a Goliath steak. Okay? So already David has this confidence. David has this place, and sometimes we're in our situations where life is fearful, it's intimidating, there's things that intimidate you. You know what intimidates me? Intimidates me is uh, future, future plans. <laughs> Man, if I could tell you about my future, I'd be sitting here going, you know, you know the, the, throw me my thumbs, I would be going, I don't know where God wants me. I don't know what God wants to do with me. I am just thumbing my fingers. Every time I think about the future, I'm being vulnerable here. I don't know. I don't know what God's going to send my way. I don't know what God's going to do. And I have these worries. I have these intimidations. Or sometimes it could be financial. I don't know where my money's going to come from. I don't know how God's going to provide. I don't know how this relationship's going to work out. I married this guy. I'm in a relationship with her. I don't know how it's going to work out. I'm really not sure if I made the right decision. Or it could be material problems. We don't have a car. We don't have certain things. How are we supposed to get to there? How are we supposed to get fed? And you have all these fears and intimidations in your life. In your life, you have these unmatched things in your life. David and Goliath are completely unmatched. How many agree? 
I may agree. David and Goliath are unmatched. It's like me versus Kevin Durant in basketball. I mean, I mean, you guys are laughing, right? You guys are laughing. Some of you guys are smiling. Some of you guys are laughing because you're like, dude, why would you even do that? Why would you even embarrass yourself? Exactly. But let me tell you, this is how God, awesome God is. I could win. I could, I could win Kevin Durant if I played Michael Jordan. Oh, see, now you're changing. I could win Kevin Durant if I played LeBron James, right? See, if I won them, if I won those two guys, you'd be like, okay, all right, he might be able to play this game. And that's what David was doing. David was saying, I played this game. I've done this before. I, I've done this before. I played this game. And so he's saying, I killed a bear and a lion, and Goliath is no different. I played ball with the best and Goliath is just one of those little things and so so it's it's important he's he has this confidence but how does David have this confidence in the midst of this trial how does David have so much confidence can I give you the secret can I give can I give you the secret is this even on Let's see. can you hear this can I give you the secret to how David has so much confidence? I'll give you the secret. The secret is the Lord. His strength comes from the Lord. His strength comes from the Lord. I want you to remember this for the rest of your life. Let God become your strength. Let God become the foundation to how you have your confidence. Because he says in verse 37, check this out. He says in verse 37, he said, David said to the Lord, who saved me from the pomp, the Lord, oh, the Lord, the Lord who saved me from the palm of the lion, the Lord who saved me from the palm of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So saw to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Okay. Did you, did you catch that? That David was saying, I defeated these animals. I defeated the bear, the lion. I defeated them, but it was through God. It was through the Lord. The Lord is the one who saved me. The Lord is the one who saved me from the paw of the lion and the bear. And he will save me from, the, the, the Goliath, from Goliath. So David is drawing his strength from the Lord. You know, we can draw our strength from so many things. I draw my strength from my dad. I draw my strength. But what happens if my dad's gone? <laughs> I'm in big trouble. I draw my strength from my mentor. But what happens when my mentor is gone? Uh-oh. I draw my strength from my family. What happens if your family is gone? What are you going to do? Where do you draw your strength from? Let me tell you where the inner strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. It comes from God. It comes from Jesus. David is saying, I was out in the wilderness and I defeated the bear and the lion through the Lord. The Lord delivered me. Yeah, I had the skill, I had the technique, but ultimately it was the Lord. And he said this statement of faith, the Lord will deliver me from the Philistine. I want you to be able to live that out. That you can say, the Lord will deliver me from my projects. The Lord will deliver me from my finances. The Lord will deliver me from this relational thing. Whatever your issue is, let God become that foundation. Let the Lord become that place of trust, of strength. That the Lord is going to get you through. That the Lord is going to carry you in the midst of those situations. I love this. He starts to draw his strength from the Lord because he what he first remembers he remembers what God did. How many how many can remember a time when God came through for you? Amen. And you guys, if you're all raising your hand, that's really good. See, David remembered. He started to draw strength from God because he remembered when God saved him from the bear and from the lion. He remembers. So when you want to draw strength from the Lord, you've got to remember, what did God do for you? By remembering and holding on to the promises and the favor of the Lord in your life, you'll see that that's when you start to draw strength. 
Like you just say, I remember, I remember the time God got me through this exam. I remember the time God got me through this financial difficulty. When you start remembering, see, a lot of people, they take things for granted, and they don't remember what God did for them. But David is saying right there in his strength, I remember, God, I remember you got me through this tough time. I remember you got me through this situation. You know, I, I often think of my high school education. I go, man, I didn't know if I was going to get through high school. But then God got me through that. I didn't know if I was going to get through college. But God somehow got me through that. Because I didn't do so well in high school, how is God going to get me through college? I actually had like a 2.0. That was it. That was my highest GPA in high school was like a 2.5. That's pretty bad. I mean, 2.3. It was even worse. How is God going to get me through college? Right? I, I, uh, 2.0 is like all C's. 2.0 is all C's. So if I got a 2.3, it's like a C and a B. That's it. A 3.0 is like a B's. All B's. A 4.0 is all A's. So I had a 2.0. I didn't know how God is going to use that. Right? But he got me, I went to junior college. <laughs> and I started to get a 3.0. 3.0, you know, and then I'm like, well, how is he going to get me through college? And that was just amazing, right? I just barely made it through. I got that. I guess I got smarter. I think I just studied more. But the whole point is God was getting me through. I remember that time because I was like, God, how are you going to get me through this? I'm just going to waste money. How are you going to get me through this? And then even seminary, I was like, dude, I can't even write. I remember during the end of the quarter, I was like, I got no papers done. I got nothing done. I, I was doing exams the whole time. I'm like, God, how are you going to do this? I remember meeting my friend all the time at, at the finals week. I said, I don't know how to do this. And he goes, you know what? I haven't even done it either. And I was like, oh, good. But that doesn't help either of us, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, you're not doing But, you know, he, he would say this. He would say this, like, one thing that was kind of encouraging is, like, but somehow God gets me through. And then after that, I would say, okay, let's pray. And then we pray, and then we hustle. We can hustle until we get it done. And I just see him every day, every morning. I say, I'll see you in the morning? Okay. I'll see you at night? Okay. And we just kind of kept each other in check. And, and, you know, God was making a way. God is making a way. And I remember that. I remember, God, you did a good thing. I remember you were doing a good thing. And that's important. We have to remember God did a good thing. Like I look at Evan. I look at little Evan here. And I go, man, God did a good thing. God did a good thing. If God can do that for Gina and Dwayne, he can do that for me. He can do that for you. I want you to, I want you to understand the spiritual kingdom. Can I show you a spiritual dynamic that I've been learning? Is that if you praise other people's blessing, like you want that too. You know God is a giving God. He is so plentiful. He can give you what other people have. He can say, you want to, we, we're, we're all worldly people. We're all thinking, oh, God only gives us a piece of the pie. If there's only two pieces of pizza, he cannot give us any more than those two pieces. But let me tell you what, God is in control. But he, he has the whole pizza, and he can give you a slice. So anytime anybody has a blessing that you want, say, God, I want that. And that's good. That's good. We all share in the glory. We all share in the blessing. If you want a healing, say, yeah, I want that in my life. I want that. That is so important to recognize that. Remembering what God did for you is so important. That's the first step to drawing strength from the Lord. When you remember his promises, when you remember what he did for you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be your confidence. David was saying, I remember God. I remember God. You saved me from the bear and the lion. I hope in your life you can say that. I hope you can say, man, I remember you saved me from the bear of school and the bear of college. I mean, the bear of school and the lion of college. Or you saved me from this financial place. Whatever it may be, God, you brought me with this person. God, you made this way for me. Remember what God did for you. People will say, God is nobody. God is nothing. Do not listen to those liars. Do not listen to those deceivers. There's too many people in Hollywood who do that. God is nothing. God is nothing. Can you imagine that? That's, a, that's toxic words. Don't ever do that and say, I, but, but my God, I remember what my God did. I remember what Jesus did. And when you remember what the Lord did, he can do it again. He can do it again. Right? He can do it again. God can do it again. David was saying, God's not only going to do this once, but he's going to do it, do it again. 
he's going to do it again. So we have to keep that in mind. Praise God. He can bring Barry back. Okay, so God can do it again. Remember that God can do it again. And so David, David started to turn his confidence. Did you see that? David started to turn as soon as he started remembering what God did for him and telling him, look, Saul, you may despise my youth, but I know God is with me. He started to turn his heart and his spirit to the Lord. He started to turn his confidence he started to turn his confidence, not to the army of Israel, not to his older brother. He didn't say, Elab, save me. Elab, let's go to battle together. Hey, buddy, let's do this together. But he didn't say to King Saul, hey, you're going to come out with me too and fight him, right? No, but he turned his strength to the Lord. Did you know David just went out by himself? David went all by himself to face this giant. He turned his heart to the Lord. He said, let me go there and let me fight him. And he turned his heart to the Lord. I want you to do that. When you're, when you're about to go in a game, you know, when things are challenging, before the battle, before the battle even starts, turn your heart to the Lord. How many get what I'm saying? You got to turn your heart to the Lord. You got you to gotta remember what the Lord did for you. Oh, yeah, I won four championships. I'm an NBA superstar. I'm a Jesus superstar. I won five championships. I know when I go to the finals game, I'm going to win this game. I love that mentality. I love that mentality. You need to have that mentality. Win some championships and remember what you won. And before you go in the battle, David starts turning his heart to the Lord. And he turns his heart to the Lord. And do you see it? Do you see what's going on? What's going on is the gold liquid. The liquid of gold is going into his heart. How many see that? The liquid, <laughs> you're probably like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the liquid of gold, the liquid, God is pouring some liquid gold into his heart. Do you understand? God is putting some liquid gold into his heart. He's putting some, what's gold in Japanese? Gin. 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 Anyways, he's putting gold, gold in his heart. He's putting gold in his heart, right? And so he has this gold in his heart. He has this confidence in his heart. And he's saying, nobody's going to defile my God. Nobody's going to mock my God. I'm going to take this guy out like I took out the other animals. And so he draws his strength from the Lord like a sheep. Like a sheep. You know, like a sword and a sheep? You know, a sword and a sheep? He draws out. He draws out his strength in the Lord. I want you, every time you draw, every time you turn to the Lord, you're drawn out from the sword. You're drawn out the sheep. And so he's drawn out from the Lord. Before battle, he's got, before his battle, he takes out his sword. Before his battle, he has his heart of gold. He's going, I'm going to go in with the Lord. I don't need to go in with the army, but I'm going to take out this sheep, and I'm going to do it for the Lord. Amen, amen. So true strength comes from the Lord. And so David, he starts, he, Saul says, hey, you got to put on this armor. you got to do all this stuff before this. He's like, you got to put on this armor. He's like, I can't. It's too big. He's a kid. He can't wear men's armor. He's not, <laughs> it's too big for him. He says, it's going to slow. He literally says this. It's going to slow me down. <laughs> I don't need armor. But, he said, but instead it says in verse 1739, David straps, okay, let me just read this. David straps Saul's sword over his armor, and he tried in, in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these. I cannot walk with this armor. It's too omotai. It's too heavy. For, the, for I am not used to them. I can't, I'm, I'm a kid. I, I'm not used to wearing this. So instead, he removes it. He removes all the armor. And then he took his staff in his hand and five, think of this, five championships. One for L.A., two for L.A., <laughs> three, five, we need five championships. The whole point is, look at this. He's got five, smooth, he said, he picks up five, can you imagine that? David, 15 years old, picking up five smooth stones. And he starts putting it in his bag. 
He puts it in his shepherd's bag. <laughs> he's only here to fight bear. You know, he protects. That's his job. You know that his, was his job. He protects sheep. He mamoru sheep. I mean, this is guy. He takes five smooth stones from the wadi and puts them in his shepherd's bag in a pouch. And his sling was in his right hand, in his right hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Amen. So he was ready to go. He had the heart of gold. He had the truth of the Lord with him. So before you go in the battle, before you face your trials, go with the Lord. Go with the Lord. Amen. Before you face your fears, before you face your challenges, go with the Lord. That's why I say pray. Pray, pray, pray every morning, pray every evening before you go in battle. Pray to God. You know, every time before I leave the hospice, I drive tremendously. I, I've told you guys this many times. I, 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 I sometimes drive in fear. <laughs> I go, oh man, I, I gotta go at uh, three o'clock to this place. Now. Oh man, I gotta drive through some serious traffic. I don't know if somebody's gonna cut me off. I don't know what's gonna happen. Sometimes I don't, this is the worst part. Sometimes I'm going to a new place. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> You're talking about a crazy combination. I'm going to go at 3 o'clock, and I don't know where I'm exactly going. I have to look at this monitor and go, okay, <laughs> you know, and kind of, kind of drive. And, but, you know, some part of me, I always say before I start driving or when it gets tough, I say, God, be with me. God, be with me. Lord, be with me. Be my strength. Be my strength. And as soon as I start to give it, I mean, I start praising. I start, I want to feel okay. So I start praising. Go, glory to God. Be with me, Lord. I start basing it, putting up music. I start listening to sermons. I start making my car a spiritual vehicle. <laughs> and I start getting in tune with the Lord. And I start preparing for battle. See, I'm preparing for battle. Not not a tangible battle, but more a spiritual battle. If we prepare ourselves, we'll be ready. So every time I go out, I prepare a battle for the Lord. Amen. I love that laugh. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> but the wonderful thing is, every time you go into battle, every time you might have an audition, you might have a project, you might have to go in a meeting, you might have to be with people you don't want to be with, prepare for battle. And pray and give your strength to the Lord. Say, Lord, I remember you brought me through the last battle. Lord, I remember you brought me through the last audition. Lord, I remember you brought me through the last meal. And I'm going to put that before you. This is very important. You've got to put it before the Lord. And so before the battle even begins, David starts to put his heart to the Lord. And God begins to pour in his heart, heart of gold. Every time, I want you to think this. Every time you give to God, your heart is going to gradually turn to gold. Okay, can you do that? That's spiritually what's going on. When you start to give your strength, when I start praying in the car, God has given me a confidence of gold. Right? So David put in his bag, took the stones and the sling, and then he goes to the battlefield. And David, David took the stone and slung it, and he struck Goliath right in the forehead. It says he struck him right in the forehead, and he prevailed, and he literally takes Goliath out with one hit. He uses one, one sling and he throws it and he gets Goliath right in the head. And, and I want you... I want you to do that. I want you, when you go into battle, now that you have the Lord with you, now go into battle and let the Holy Spirit lead. Let the Lord lead. And say, say to yourself, I'm not going to lose. I won't lose. And even if you do lose, don't lose your confidence in the Lord. But every battle you go in, every rock that you throw, everything that you spin around in that rock, put your hopes, put your dreams, put your health, put your healing. I want you to know that every rock that you throw in the face of your adversities, in the face of your situation, is going to fulfill Fulfill, right? It's always what do they call, call it in basketball? When you shoot, when you shoot, you, you commit to the shot. And what do they call that? Follow through. Follow through. Oh, thank you. So the follow through. This is exactly what's important. That you carry the same follow through. You carry the same follow through with the Lord. That when you are up for battle, you go with your follow through, and you you make sure that's how you know it's going to go in. 
You know what I'm talking about? You know when it's going to go when you have a good follow, follow through. So I want you to look at every situation, every adversity, every meeting, every project, every situation. Use it as a point in which you're going to throw. Use it as a point in which you're going to throw far. You're going to throw it far. You're going to throw it far. Don't ever lose your hope. Don't ever lose your dreams. Because when it lands, when it lands, it'll take out the giant. When it lands, it'll take out the giant. You know, that's the first time I've done that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. But the whole point is you got to have a good follow through. I want you to always carry. Can you guys do this? Can you carry some rocks in your bag? Can you carry some five rocks in your bags and go into battle and give it to God? Can you pray before the Lord and, and make him your strength? Can you do that? I, want you, I should have brought some rocks today. I wish I could have brought some five smooth rocks for all you guys. I want you to remember what God is doing. It says in Psalms 20, 28.7, The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, of, I praise him. Does anybody have that in Japanese? Or Chinese? Do you have that in Chinese, Chusong? Put your word. Psalms, <laughs> Psalms 28, 7. Chinese or Japanese. Yeah, very good. Really good. Does anybody have in Japanese? If not, it's okay. Okay, go ahead. Read it in Japanese. Amen. So strong. Wow, so powerful. The Lord is my chikara. It says chikara. Chikara. The Lord, watashi no chikara. Watashi no chikara wa. What do you say? Lord is comes on? Shua. Shua. Shua watashi no chikara. I sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> but the whole point is, yeah, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my shield. Whatever trials I face, I bring the Lord into them. Whatever situations I face, even death itself, I want you to pray with me. I want you to be with me. I want you to, Lord, lead me. Every audition, even if it goes good or bad, the Lord is with me. The Lord will give me blessing. The Lord will guide me. I want you to live in such a way that even... Though you may have a bad day, honor the Lord. Say, God's going to do something good, even when something ha bad happens. This is how you get the Lord's strength, too. Is when something bad happens, you say, no, but the Lord is still going to do something good. The Lord is still going to bring some kind of blessing. I want you to have your spiritual eyes open and say, God, even though this meeting didn't go well, even though this audition didn't go well, even though this visit didn't go well, God is still going to do something good today. That is keeping your strength in the Lord. Mada, 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 mada. Kami sama ga watashi no tami ni ii na koto yatte ageru. That is strength. That is strength. Every single time. Oh, looking cool. Every single time. <laughs> you got to find strength in the Lord. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember what God has done for you. And start to turn to the Lord. And once you start turning to Him and trusting in Him, Get some rocks. Get some of those rocks in your life and say, I'm going to go into this meeting. I'm going to go into this audition. I'm going to meet with this person. I'm going to do what I got to do. But I'm going to be prepped for battle. I'm going to be spiritually ready for the Lord. And when you go out there, have your rocks ready. And be ready to swim. Okay? So remember, making God the strength of your life. Most people say, yeah, God is my strength. God is my strength. But how do you do that? And remember what God did for you. And you pray and you prepare for battle. And then you go forward. You go forward and you say, the Lord is with me. Why do I have to be afraid? Why do I have to be intimidated? God is with me. Use this verse. Let this verse be a stepping stone for you. The Lord is my strength. Shiwa watashi no chikara. Right? 
So remember, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. I want you to see that in your life. I want you to know that. And a lot of people, I actually was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, that person was having a very difficult time. She's like, I'm feeling really weak. I'm feeling really vulnerable. And I thought immediately, you need the Lord as your strength. And I said, cast all your burdens on the Lord. And I said, oh, don't worry, I'll be praying for you. And that's so important. It's so important to encourage people, to keep people in strength. I want you to be leaning on the Lord for strength. Don't lean on people. Don't lean on yourself. Don't lean on something else, but lean on God. You know, it's like it's like if I were to lean on this mic. What's going to happen? I'm going to fall over. <laughs> Just like waiting for me to fall over. But I'm going to fall over. It's not good enough. It's not my, I can't put my strength on this. It's too weak. I can't put my strength on this friend. It's too weak. I can't put my strength on this person. It's too weak. I need to put my strength on the Lord. I need to put my strength on the Lord. I need to put my strength on the Lord. Because the Lord can handle your life. The Lord can handle your life. You need to put your strength on the Lord. We put too much strength on people. But we don't put enough strength on God. Amen? You need to start putting strength on the Lord. If you put strength on the Lord, you will be able to take out giants when you're unmatched. God puts you in unmatched situations and challenges so that you can turn to Him. Did you know that? When you're at a deficit, when you're at a challenging point, it's actually a point in which God is saying, talk to me, lean on me, and go to me. Did you know that? I want you to recognize that when you're in trial, that you go to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, I just want to pray for everybody here. So why don't we all stand and pray? And receive this with your arms wide open, your hands ready to receive. But Lord God, we just pray for everyone here. Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to be with those who are in struggle or in trial or in question or in ambiguity of their situation. Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to touch them and give them strength, God. For you are a strength-giving God. You are one to say, I'm going to carry you through this. I'm going to give you all the strength that you need. And I just pray for everybody's situation, whatever it may be, that we don't look at it as a problem. But we look at it as a potential promise. We look at it as a potential point in which we can draw strength from you, God. I pray for every person here to receive the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray for every person to, to not be afraid of their worldly circumstance, of their spiritual circumstance, and be free and be in full confidence that the Lord can deliver me from the bear and the lion. He will deliver me from this giant. He will deliver me from this intimidation. He will deliver me from this fear because I fully, I fully trust God. I fully trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, God. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what do you guys say? What do you, what do you Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay. You may be seated. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and receive the offering right now. And uh, we're grateful to the Lord. He's provided for us. All Each one of us here, God has provided given us not only physical things that we need to live, but also a spiritual power and the, the power that David had to take Goliath, that same power, Woo! that same spirit Amen. is working in you. Can work in you. But things change. God, God never changes. Jesus Christ saved us through this day forever. Let's Woo! pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message that we've heard. Amen. Let us be strong. We want to be strong. Hallelujah. And we commit to you, Lord. As yeah, David was, we will take on our Goliath, whatever that Goliath may be, <laughs> we're ready to take him on, Hallelujah. it on. And so, Lord, we pray for your blessing upon today, upon this offering you're about to receive, and let it be used for your, your work, your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. amen. Okay, if you could uh, remember, uh, Pastor Jim and I will be going to Portland uh, in about a week and a half. And uh, my brother had passed away uh, about three weeks ago, and so there'll be a, 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 a kind of like a meeting for him. I wouldn't even call it a service because 
pray for my, my brother's family uh, that they may know the Lord and uh, that they may know the Lord and that God will use us uh, as his ambassadors as we go up there uh, to the community. It will be held in a community college. We call it the celebration of life. So uh, just pray that we'll have a ministry in some way that the Lord, the gospel, may go to the family, my family in Portland. We have a lot of friends. We're expecting quite a few people. My relatives. I own. I have a lot of family in in Portland. Uh, and so anyway, remember that. Um, get the reports in. Annual reports. I need them this week. If you can turn them in, those of you who uh, plan to write the reports, please do so. And we have the prayer calendars over there. Um, pray for my seminary class. I'll be teaching in later on in September. And just for the, the students, the, the Chinese students. That, uh, that God will use them and, and use uh, the training that we, that we give them to be able to reach out. There, there are millions of Chinese that live here in Southern California, the, the whole area, the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, and there's a lot of people to reach out to. And so uh, uh, years ago, someone prayed over me. And they prayed with a great anointing of the Holy Spirit back in the 90s, and they said that you're going to be a missionary to the Chinese. And so I thought, well, where am I going to go to China? <laughs> like, Barry, am I going to go to China? And you know, well, I think China's going to come here. <laughs> and so I, I, I really feel that I'm fulfilling my calling for the last 25 years or so. I've been teaching at the seminary. I'll be teaching Greek uh, in September. But, uh, but I'm, I'm actually bringing, I'm really wor working among Chinese. And God has given uh, uh, me a great love. Pastor Spring and I, we have, we have had a great love for, for the Chinese people. There's a picture here of, of her summer class that she taught last summer. And so, anyway, it's a great blessing. Uh, any other announcements that we have coming up? Um, okay, great. We're going to go ahead and enter into communion. And I was thinking about Pastor Jim's message. And it says that, that uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, that our... In 612, that our fight is not against people, not against flesh and blood, wow. but against principalities and rulers in the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realms. And so we need to um, deal with them in, in, by girding up with our spiritual armor. And you think of all the, the things that are listed, all the weapons and all the defenses uh, that are listed in Ephesians chapter 6. And, and we are to appropriate each piece of armor by faith and by our knowledge of the truth. And another thing, we are actually girding up to take on Goliath through communion. Amen. Because it's important, it says in Ephesians, in the Living Bible translation, that, that we move in the power of the Spirit by the, with the approval of God upon our lives. It's very important we have the approval of God. God is pleased with us. God approves of us. Amen. And we know that, that if we have sin, that we can come to Jesus and we can get the sins under the blood and forgiven and removed from us and cleansed from us so that, that we are acceptable in God's eyes. Hallelujah. And, and not only that, but by our walk, walk and our desire, like David desired to, he saw the name of God being pulled down by this giant. He said, no way. No. He, he had a passion for the name of God, Woo. for God's, God's glory. Yeah. And do you have that passion to pull God's glory, God's name? And so as we go to communion, let it, let it be a time that we cleanse ourselves. Yeah. And that we, we gain approval for the Lord, that we can take on the Goliaths in our lives. Yes, God. And with uh, the full clarity of our spirit with the Lord, and that we know that He loves us, we experience that love, we receive that love. And that's what communion is. So, this is actually part of Goliath, taking down Goliath, is yeah. his communion. It's important for yes. us to go to Him. That if we have Amen. sinned, that He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 9. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this communion table, for it represents Jesus' Hallelujah. sacrifice for us. We, we need that sacrifice. We rest upon that sacrifice. And so we pray for you to prepare our hearts as we come to your table. We pray that you'll anoint, prepare our hearts and anoint all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to invite you to, to come uh, up here. And uh, go ahead and, and take the, the wafer and also the, the cup, and we can partake together. After. Just go ahead and take it and then s stand aside. You don't have to go back to your seat, but you can stand aside in the bowl. We can all take it together. Yep. Uh, two son, Joseph. One up. I'd like to invite all of you. This is the blood of uh, body.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is broken for you, take eat in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper with his disciples, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. For as often as you eat this and as you drink this, you proclaim my death. All the time. Every time you're proclaiming my death until I come again. And so with great, great gratitude, joy, to partake of what the Lord has provided for us. And so, by the himself, he loves us so much. Hallelujah. That he is willing to die for us. Praise the Lord. Let us Shall we partake and the gratefulness in our hearts? Lord Jesus says that we receive, Lord, everything that you have given and done for us. In Jesus' name. Shall we stand and let's let's close with the Lord's Prayer? Our Father. Trust in him. Seek him in everything you do. And may the Lord's blessing be upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.